Hi everyone, Isabel Morton here. I'm the founder of the Gemstone Therapy Institute. And today I'm going to show you a selection of some of our most rare and precious gemstones that come in sphere form. In the sister video to this one, I go over some very special healing gemstones that are in rondelle form. So be sure to check that one out if you haven't seen it yet. Healing gemstone spheres are the very basis of modern day gemstone therapy. And that is so for many reasons, primarily because the sphere form of a crystal allows its energies to radiate throughout our body and being in all directions, giving us the very maximum benefit from the gemstone. So allow me to show you some of the very finest and rare. I'm going to start with Poppy Jasper. Poppy Jasper has been very hard to find lately, along with many other gemstones. What sets it apart from other jasper that has often been called poppy, which really isn't, is that it needs to have four colors in it, or at least three. It needs to have at least three and ideally four different colors in it. That is red, black, tan, and perhaps a cream color. This one here certainly meets all those criteria. We pair poppy jasper with symbiotic river stone. River stone helps to catalyze, strengthen, and support the work of the primary stone, which in this case is the poppy jasper. A poppy jasper, we affectionately call it the caffeine of the mineral kingdom because when you wear the stone, it makes your energy flows move faster. And the purpose of the river stone here is to channel those flows so that we're less likely to be distracted, but to stay on course, whatever that course might be, which is determined by your intention for working with the gemstone. So if there's ever something that you feel like you want to do and you need a little help getting the energy to do it, Poppy Jasper would be a good choice from the mineral kingdom to support you on your healing journey or on your life path. Okay, next I'd like to show you a gemstone that is so beautiful. It reminds me of the earth. It's called azurite and malachite. This gemstone is simply not being mined anymore, partly because it comes from Afghanistan and because of the COVID situation, many of the mines have either closed or shut down. The other problem is that the material that is coming out of the earth is of a quality that is so fragile that when you try to make it into a sphere, it crumbles. And it's become much cheaper for gem dealers to purchase assembled material. And in many cases, the assembled material of azurite malachite, it looks almost the same as the natural, the colors are more distinct, they're brighter, but it's not the same. There is no therapeutic value out of assembled material. One way to know if the azurite malachite that you find is manufactured and not natural is you can find, if you look at the beads very closely, you can see pieces, geometric pieces of azurite or malachite. And if you find a piece of malachite, if you see the layers in the malachite, the green and black stripes in the malachite, then you know that it is indeed manufactured. But at the latest gem show, I was, I was fooled too at first glance. I, I saw this pile of what looked like beautiful azurite malachite and I was so excited. And then when I came up and I, I looked at it and I realized this isn't real. So, of course, we let it go. But this material is absolutely real. It's absolutely natural. You can tell because the separation between the blue azurite and the green malachite is inconsistent. It's natural. There's no geometry about it. It's very free form. We pair azurite malachite with emerald and blue sapphire because one of the reasons you might want to wear at the we call this the Earth Star Necklace. One of the reasons you might want to wear it is because it vitalizes and awakens 
the repository of information that we brought with us into this lifetime about our purpose for being in this lifetime. And that repository is called the Earth Star Chakra. Throughout our life, if we are well grounded, we're able to access the Earth Star Chakra, usually when we sleep, and bring forward information that can help us make decisions. And that is why people often say, well, let me sleep on it, and I'll let you know in the morning what my decision is. Unbeknown to them, at night, when they're asleep, that's when we have the greatest access to our Earth Star Chakra, and the information comes forward, and it's easier to make the decision. Working with the Earth Star Chakra Necklace, working with Azurite Malachite, which vitalizes that Earth Star Chakra, allows the information to come forward more freely and with, a, with our greater conscious awareness because we are intentionally looking for it. The emerald helps to vitalize our physical body so that the information moves more easily into our body, so our, our sense of gut sense and knowing something in our bones, so to speak, is more apparent. And then the blue sapphire supports our mental body so that this information comes more easily into our brain and we can intellectually understand what we're doing and the decisions that we're making as well. So, azurite malachite, this is so rare. We have not seen new material. Well, we found some recently, a much smaller, that was maybe like four millimeter in size. And we've made some very tiny necklaces with it, very delicate necklaces, but this is the last of the larger material. So very rare, very precious, and what a helpful tool. The gemstone world offers us healing tools for all aspects of ourselves, not just physical, but more importantly, the emotional body, our memory body, our mental body, and even our intuitive body. I'm now going to show you one of the quintessential tools for nourishing and supporting our mental body. And here it is. This is the Tranquility Formula. It is made of blue chalcedony, primarily, which helps relax the mind, blue sapphire, which is very nourishing for the mind, and then blue topaz, which is very rare, but it helps to soften the mind, to allow in greater nourishment, and to allow relaxation to occur. Most of our minds these days are being so overworked, they're so active, it's very easy to create traffic jams, you might say, of thought, which causes mental blocks. If we could just relax the mind a little bit, then things could open up for us creatively and just analytically as well, the analytical aspect of our mind. So very excellent for improving your ability to problem solve and to renew that creative flow. And also just to relax your mind if you're feeling overstressed and mentally frazzled. Okay, here's the same necklace with a different lighting. What's really beautiful about Blue Child Sandy is its translucence. And when you hold this up to the light, many of the beads have this golden glow to them. There you go. You can see that a little better. It especially shows up in sunlight. Next, I'm going to show you a gemstone that's not so rare, but high quality, which I'm going to show you, is very rare, very, very precious. This is a gemstone that helps build energetic bridges, which comes into importance when we're trying to communicate something and we want our message to be heard. So may I introduce to you rutilated quartz with spacertite. So what rutilated quartz does is help build those energetic bridges, particularly between your throat chakra and other people, which makes your communications more easily heard and understood. 
So a necklace-like rutilated quartz with spessartite is particularly helpful for those who have a message. If you're an entertainer, if you're a teacher, if you have something new that you want to bring to the world, wearing rutilated quartz with spessartite can be an excellent tool for you to work with. As you can see, the rutilated quartz has an extraordinary candescence. It literally glows in light. It is stunning when you wear it. And we pair it with orange spessartite because what spessartite does is it helps to lengthen vortexes. So in terms of rutilated quartz, it's going to help you lengthen the bridge to help you to help your reach lengthen and expand. It's really a extraordinary, extraordinary gemstone. What makes rutilated quartz so special is when the quartz background is clear, is free of clouds, and the rutiles are very well defined, which these are. They're evenly distributed throughout the gemstone. There are many of them without being crowded, and Again, this, the candescence is truly spectacular. Okay, next I'd like to share another aura nourishing gemstone. This is one that vitalizes particularly the brow chakra, which supports our ability to receive our intuition and our inner guidance. Although that guidance can come through many vehicles, even just physically, we can feel something's the right thing to do or not. But it is, but the chakra that is involved in supporting good and clear and accurate intuition is the brow chakra. And so this gemstone here, this is called charite. It is particularly vitalizing for the brow chakra. Clearly that looks a lot better in a different color of lighting. So this is the charite. We pair it with indigo and indigo is also vitalizing for the intuitive aspect of ourselves, the intuitive layer of the aura, so to speak. And so they are a very effective pair. What charite does that is unique is that it strengthens the energetic fabric of the chakras so that they can reach all the way through the aura to the outermost layer of it, which is that intuitive layer. And because the indigo has an affinity with that layer and is particularly nourishing for it, it helps the charite energy to reach through all layers of our aura to get there. This charite is absolutely outstanding. There are no instances of the black, which is common in charite, but which we high grade out. There are some instances of a very dark purple, and we think that's fantastic, but it's just so beautiful. These charite beads are just amazing. They have this wonderful chatoyance, which is an optical quality, which makes some of these beads reflect light in a very special way. Lovely, lovely gemstone, gorgeous, gorgeous necklace. To give you a sense of how rare charite is, when I bought this one, it was the only one in the entire Tucson gem show that I found that was of therapeutic quality. There was no other charite that I found at all. So we were very, very happy to have found this one. Next, I'd like to show you a gemstone that the Earth is no longer giving us in a size that is suitable for making spheres, and that is Australian opal. We pair Australian opal with aquamarine. Many of the opal mines are closing simply because the material that the Earth is providing is so thin or it's non-existent. The material that is coming out of the Earth is thin enough to make cabochons, which are used in pendants and earrings and other jewelry, rings, and so forth, but it's not thick enough to make spheres. So there is no new Australian opal material. Unfortunately, there is another kind of opal out there which looks a lot flashier 
than Australian opal and is considerably cheaper. But the problem is it has a relationship with water such that over time it gets more and more yellow. This opal is called Ethiopian opal and I think it's a little bit uh, impetuous <laughs> energetically. You can't rely on it. It's um, kind of like a toddler. It's a young gemstone. And I believe that, and I have seen how gemstones evolve over time. They might start out as youth, and then as they grow older, they become more reliable in their therapeutic qualities, and, and something that becomes a worthwhile therapeutic tool. For example, amethyst. Amethyst, you might say, is, well, ruby also, one of our oldest gemstones. Very wise, very reliable, no surprises, good therapeutic tools. Australian opal is also one of the older ones. It's very reliable, steady, and the reason why the steadiness and reliability is so important for opal is that opal helps soften your mind so that you can be more open to new ideas. Another approach to take when you're feeling stuck or the creative flow has slowed down or even stumbled within you. But opal helps you to open your mind, to therefore open your heart, to be able to comprehend new ideas and new capabilities. It's an excellent one when perhaps you want to start working with new technologies, even new gemstone therapy technologies, and a part of you is still skeptical. So it's really good for me because I'm probably my own biggest skeptic and it helps me to, wearing the opal, helps me to realize that I am capable of fulfilling what I'm here to do. That the blockages that I put up for myself are just blockages I've put up for myself and they are illusion. That I really can fulfill my purpose and dreams in this lifetime. So softening my mind has been very helpful to me and I'm very grateful for the opal for helping me do that. Australian opal does not yellow over time. It retains its color. This is a particularly lovely variety of opal. It's very precious. So what makes this so special is the strength and consistency and the degree of presence of these green and blue play of color in each of the beads. And then when you put it in the light, there's this yellow glow. It's really interesting. Let's see if I can move the light to show you that. Okay, that's the very best I can do here, but in sunlight you can see it very clearly. And I'm do my best to show you these the play of color in this, which is really extraordinary. Oh, there you go. Usually it's easier seen in indirect lighting. But look at those. Look at those colors. Just truly, truly special. Absolutely fantastic. And look at how that aquamarine just goes crazy with candescence. And the purpose of the aquamarine is to help you become more aware of the new thoughts and ideas that the opal is helping you to, to realize. So a very, very special piece that we are just so grateful to, to have to offer you. It just feels so soft. And, and I know that opening your mind to new ideas, it can be scary because it means change. It means change. It takes a very brave and courageous person to be willing to say, okay, I am willing to change myself so that I can grow because growth requires change. And what's so lovely about this Australian opal is that it gives you a sense of comfort that lets you know that it's okay. Just, just a sense of, of comfort that you get from this opal. It's not something you're going to get from Ethiopian opal. It just isn't. It's not the same gemstone. 
it's completely different. It's just this sense of reassurance that it's okay. It's okay to open your mind. It's okay to learn new things. It's okay to bring in something new and to think newly, to expand your reach into areas you may never have gone to before. And I tell you, that is very liberating for me. It's very encouraging as well. We call it Mother Opal because it includes the matrix of the rock around it. We usually avoid the matrix in a gemstone because that matrix tends to serve as an inclusion. It kind of lowers the vibration of the gemstone. You have this beautiful stone and on one little side there's a little piece of the rock <laughs> that it came from. It just lowers the vibratory rate and interferes with the gemstone's healing capabilities. But in the case of Mother Opal, that matrix is what helps make this gemstone do what it does. And namely, we call it Mother Opal because that sense of the matrix around the opal is like the care of the womb and the safety and support of that womb. And when you wear the necklace is particularly helpful for helping you to reach into the universal mother and in doing so resolve issues with your own mother. By reaching into the universal mother you bypass the personal and you're able to connect with that deep sense of nurturing that you may not have had growing up. That deep sense of, of everything we wish our mother could have been for us, but wasn't, because after all, she was human. All those things that we wish that we had nurturing us. And this is what it looks like. Each bead is completely unique. Each one has opal in it, surrounded by this matrix. So the metaphor here is that the opal is you, and the matrix is the universal mother. Each one can draw you into a world where you can contemplate a different aspect of your relationship with mother and mother earth. Whether you're the mother or you're looking or you're the daughter or the son. Okay, there's that one there. Look at that glow. It was there and then it left. Oh, there it is, this white, that red fire and the blue next to it. And this is almost has this white. This one is kind of yellowish with a flash of blue. It's as though each of these beads, if you look into the world that each of these beads represents, you can connect with something, some aspect, some facet of Universal Mother. Every single bead is very special like this. By wearing this necklace or a bracelet made of this Mother Opal, you're able to be supported by the information and the understanding about Universal Mother that starts to grow within you that understanding, that sense of acceptance and tolerance and forgiveness and at the same time the sense of comfort and safety and protection that, that grows within you. It is so deeply healing, especially if you've had difficulties with your birth mother or your earth mother, your uh, biological or mother in this lifetime or motherhood in general. Wearing this necklace or, or the bracelet or applying it to a, a client in a session can be so healing and so informative, so resolving, helping you to resolve by increasing your understanding of what the Earth Mother is, the Universal Mother. 
I'd, I'd like to see some people work with this necklace and truly become an expert in what it means to be a son or a daughter of, of the earth. These necklaces, the mother opal, they're sometimes available, sometimes not. We have been able to get about one a year, and that's by special order. So if you are interested and if this one has sold out, there is a slight possibility we'd be able to get you another one. Okay, finally I'd like to show you a gemstone that I wear just about every day and have done so for the past several years, and that is jade, green nephrite jade. We offer both Canadian and Siberian jade. The Siberian jade is a lot more precious than the Canadian, but in either case we try to be very careful about the inclusions in the jade so that what you are getting is as clear as possible at the quality level and price point. The two that I'm going to show you are Siberian and oh, perhaps the reason for the preciousness of the Siberian is that it has this chatoyance to it. It has this beautiful ability to reflect light in a very subtle way but it makes it so much more effective as a healing tool because it's able to then radiate its energies more deeply into the aura. I wear the nephrite jade because it helps me collect my energies. The jade has an influence on strengthening the centripetal flow, the flow that brings energy toward you. And through illness or age, our energies tend to fly out in a centrifugal force more easily. So the centripetal force keeps our energies in. It helps keep us youthful and collected and maybe not so scattered. It helps us to focus better on what we're doing, whether it's mentally or emotionally or even physically, keeping our cells focused on the task they are assigned. At least that's the way I look at it. So again, the direction of light is not doing these particular jades much good. <laughs> Let's see if I can move the light so you can see it better. Oh, there we go. That works as well. Notice the translucence of this jade when you put the right light to it, or if you hold it up in sunlight or at a window. It all has this wonderful translucence. Let's see if we can get the translucence in the larger. There we go. The larger stones. The color is even. This is a lovely forest green. Jade does come in different shades of green. I've seen some beautiful light or lighter green with incredible chatoyance. So this concludes my presentation of our most precious and rare therapeutic gemstones that are in sphere form. I invite you to take a look at the sister video, which showcases the healing gemstone necklaces that we have in the rondelle form of the gemstones. Okay, well thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.